All right, and Kat McLeod, you are the creator of the stay-at-home mom entrepreneur on the web at sahmentrepreneur.com. And Kat, you're also the founder of multiple, not just one, but multiple six-figure businesses. All right, and you did this, and you continue to do this, now operating your business and businesses as a mom. And I'd say, you know, with, uh, so I have 12 years now with Savings Angel, my other company, uh, that's been my audience is working with moms. And Kat, one thing I can tell you that, you know, and again, um, being a dad that works from home, you know, I get to my wife is a family therapist and she's really busy. Our kids, like, you know, they're now like 20, 16 and 13. Like we've been through all of that. And one thing I can tell you is that when you're a parent, Whew, it can really eat up your time Not in a good way. But if you want to start a business or operate a business and you got the kids all over, they can be kind of challenging. And I think that's where you come in. So how were you, how are you able to do this? What are your secret I, ninja tricks? I use a 30-minute hyper-focus model that I teach all of my clients and I'm going to teach your listeners. That means okay. for 30 minutes, you block out that time every single day in your calendar. So that could be before the kids go to bed, after they go to bed, whenever that time chunk that you can be consistent as, because the number one key to success is being consistent. And during this time period, you focus only on what is going to move your business forward. So if you haven't launched your business, that means on your roadmap from A to Z of a successful business, that day you go from E to F, and that's all you focus on. For, so mm. for that 30-minute sprint, you know exactly where you're going. You go from E to F, you follow a very good plan, you follow what your coach tells you to do, or you get an amazing course that you know how to implement. And during that time, your sprint, you focus only on that. And what I even like better than that is my 15, 15, 15 hyper-focus model. That's 15 mm -hmm. minutes before the kids get up, 15 minutes at quiet time, lunchtime, 15 minutes after bed. Because we know that when you yeah. sit down to sprint, you can get so much done in that 15 minutes when nothing is detracting you, when all you are focused on doing those tasks. And you think about what your next task is. You don't do it right when you sit down. You are doing the mundane parent tasks of putting the dishes away into the bathroom, anything, washing your hands. You, you know where you are on that roadmap. You sit down and you do that. You don't waste any time looking at social media, checking your email. It's only about that. And for your more right. down the road entrepreneurs, this is super effective too, because during this sprint, you're not launching your business anymore, but during this sprint, you are going to do client acquisition work only. And in the rest of your time, that's when you can work on your business. But this is the time to do what's going to move your business to the next level. You know, I absolutely love uh, what, what you're sharing. And I can tell you that it absolutely works. And, and I'll give you a couple of illustrations. First off, um, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with um, Michael Gerber, E-Myth. I, I heard you make some references to some things, you know, about working Working on your business and not in your business. Tony Robbins talks a lot about this. I've been to Business Mastery. And, um, you know, and I think that that's one of the biggest traps. I think that that's why so many business owners don't succeed is because they spend all their time, if they have a pie business, for example, spend their time making their pies. And the number one job of this is to grow your business. And so if you're spending all your time in the operations, you're not growing the business. That's the, those are some of the things you need to delegate. But I love what you said, client acquisition. That's where the money's going to come from. And, uh, you know, if you're just allowing the day to happen to you and you're not being uh, proactive, I, uh, Kat, I'm sure you and I have had experienced that. Like we just don't get that much done. One final illustration. I have another, some more questions for you is, um, you know, when people think about how much they can or can't get done in a period of time, uh, you know, I think about the example of, you know, when, if you've ever worked in corporate America and it's your last day before you get to go on vacation for a week and a half, and you know that you've got a ton of stuff you need to nail down before you leave the office, 
I don't know what it is, but people on that last day before vacation, man, that superhero cape comes out and they become invincible. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Just like crossing things off their to-do list like nobody's business. Uh, the fact is, I think a lot of us can do a lot more um, in, and I like your idea of doing this in sprints as opposed to trying to keep that pace for eight to 10 hours. It's not realistic. It's just not going to happen. So you don't need to beat yourself up over that. Uh, but it's like, you know, if, and, and how important is this uh, to make lists in advance for these upcoming windows? I know exactly where I'm going to go before I do it. I even think yeah. about it before I sit down. Like I said, when you're doing a mundane task, this is especially important for moms who already have full-time jobs that they don't get paid for called mom. And mm -hmm. they, a lot of my moms start out trying to multitask, trying to take care of the kids at the same time as growing their business. And guess what? They get almost nothing down done because it takes so much time for your mind to like refocus on what needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, well, we do, they do get paid. They get paid in love. <laughs> but love don't pay the bills. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think that's so great. And, and, and how important is it? Because I, I think it's important to set goals and have lists and like, okay, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And sometimes that doesn't happen. And so how do we respond to that emotionally? I mean, let go of the mom guilt is what I tell my moms. Mm. Life does happen. And I like to make sure that people understand that their self-worth has nothing to do with their business's success. Yes, right. we want success, but when you wrap your self-worth into that success, it actually impedes your progress. It is what can slow you down mentally from doing the consistent action. Beating yourself up just doesn't work. I think human nature, like we beat ourselves up because we think it's going to drive us forward. And what it really does is just make us stand still and spin still. So you miss the day. Then you know in your next sprint or when you have more time, you do two sprints that day. You just do it forward and it keeps you excited for your business. Yeah. Um, so you talked about client acquisition earlier and I think that this is probably something that might scare a lot of people is, um, and let's say that someone's a freelancer, let's say they want to, um, they want to do some writing, which I think would be a, a really great freelancer job to pursue. Like, um, so you're doing copywriting or blog writing or maybe social media management. How do you get clients for that kind of stuff? The number one way to get clients for any business is to connect with your audience, to make your marketing material or literally speak to your audience and make it about them. One of the main mistakes I see is that you keep you, people put so much in their marketing about themselves and what they mm -hmm. offer. And it has to be about what your client actually wants. And the number one way to get clients nowadays is to connect with them. I mean, there's just so many there's so much noise on the internet nowadays or even yeah. in person. So the number one way for people starting out, I, mean, I have a lot of offline clients and online clients and mm -hmm. offline can actually be much easier for starting a business because you are in the community. You are a person they are buying from, not some video or some post on the internet that people have to connect to. Starting inside your own community is the easiest way to get your first paying clients or inside your warm yeah. circle. For those of you starting out who might not have testimonial, who might not have a lot of experience, start with your warm community. And that again, feel that goes back to being confident in yourself, understanding that your self-worth is not locked into your business so that you have that confidence to bring out your offer into the community and make sure sure that you always lead with what your people want, not what you do, what your people want. Yeah. So we're talking about not necessarily the features of what you offer. Uh, I do social media management. That's not what you do. What you, you, what you do is you help grow uh, communities uh, or you help, you know, you know, help your audiences fall in love with your client, you know, through, you know, better communication or, you know, sharing of content. And so start thinking of um, what that's ultimately going to provide. And so like, say, for example, so if a uh, cat, you're obviously you have some social media platforms yourself, um, you know, in, in this instance, you know, your social media 
is is incredibly valuable to you. And I think there's a lot of business owners um, that that need the outcome of what you could potentially provide. What what would you say like for a mom? Have you and maybe you've encountered this mom that says, "Cat, I don't know what to do. Um, like all I know is I want to do something. I, you know." I'm I'm smart. Uh, you know, I went went to college for a while. Uh, you know, I'm really good at manage. You know, managing my kids. You know, I, I don't know. I'm just throwing out some really generic things that 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 someone may have. Um, what are some really great business opportunities right now? That is a great question, Josh. And most of my clients come to me at this point. They've been thinking about it. They feel like, I don't know if I have an idea that can start a right business. And I just want to reassure your listeners that you absolutely do have a skill, talent, or gift that can be parlayed into a business. One of my first stay-at-home mom entrepreneurs, she had been taking online courses and different things and nothing was sticking to her. And we actually went backwards into her skill set and found out that she knew how to make beautiful cakes. She learned this from her mom and did not think that this could be turned into a business. Now she has a thriving business because we found a subset of her niche. So that's my superpower. I'm really great Mm. at getting the right niche because as you shared my first business, I accidentally niched and became rich from that business. So I helped her toned down her offer. The subset was gluten-free baking, which is very popular here in coastal Southern California. And she has a... (laughs) Yeah, she has a thriving business all these years later. So she's just one example of like using a skill that you might not think is going to be parlayed into a successful business on your terms. And she has it. And and it's time and time again, another mom in my community, she started a healthy meal prep service and she works the same amount that she was already doing with her own family. She just scaled it. And for those of us who gave up careers or don't use our master's degrees or our law degrees, one of my clients, she has a law degree, but she chose to be a stay-at-home mom and not miss out on her three kids growing up. So we found a subset of her specialty where she specializes in a single form of immigration law here in Los Angeles. And she Mm. can pay for her nanny just doing a few clients a year. Wow. Wow. Oh, I love this. So, um, so Kat, you do a couple things. Um, you have a community. You've got a free training that you do as well, um, and these are both available at um, uh, sahmentrepreneur.com, which stands for uh, Stay at Home Mom Entrepreneur.com. Um, so, you have a, a thriving Facebook group, or I would imagine you can connect with other moms, learn from one another, you provide some great resources there. Um, what's the training about? The training and the, and, and the training it's is it is it free or oh yeah the training is absolutely free I want right. all moms to find fulfillment and meaning you and income outside of being mom to be more than mom again oh, yeah. to, mm-hmm. to reclaim a piece of themselves so that training is absolutely free and it just outlines the four key steps to launching a successful business because this is something people miss so i'm giving though that framework away for free because i want to help as many moms that want that fulfillment want that meaningful work want to share their gifts to have that basic framework to know what necessary steps need to be taken wonderful wonderful Well, Kat McLeod, thank you so much for joining us. You're the founder of Stay at Home Mom Entrepreneur on the web at sahmentrepreneur.com. You've got a free training that anyone can listen to or anyone can watch right now at your website. And of course, you have a great Facebook community. So thank you so much for joining. And also, uh, Kat, you've done this a couple, you've done this a few times. (laughs) Jesus, and you've done it multiple times, which that's saying something. Uh, that means that you figured out a, a, a path and a pattern and you repeated it multiple times. So, uh, you know, I always love learning from someone who's done the deal. You know, they've not just, you know, they, they haven't just read a couple books on it and they're just kind of regurgitating what they learned, uh, but they can actually learn from you, someone who's actually achieved, like they've tested it. It works. Your systems work. So thank you so much for joining us. I've had a wonderful time.